Hey, it's Gail Banks again. We're at Banks Power. We're testing flat back diff covers. There's a lot of questions. We're gonna answer some more of them today, but the prime one I wanna know is, are we getting any loop to this? Whew. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, welcome back to the Banks Diff Cover Series. You remember last time we ran a plastic curve back, kind of like the stock, um, but we also observed, due to a flat at the top, that while it was following the ring gear through the curve, it was impacting this flat, spilling off to the side. So I thought, hmm, if that's bad, I wonder what's happening inside of these, you know, because you got a really flat back. You're driving the fluid, I theorize, into this flat, up across any features that might be inside, dragging it, and then impacting the top. Will it spill off? What I'm curious about is what happens inside of one of these things with that square corner, impact there, drive it up to here, impact here. Does anything get to the ring and pinion interface? Does anything get to that front pinion bearing at all? Well, I'm not Superman. I can't see through these things. So I thought, okay, let's take the Meg High Tech. It didn't have any features on the inside anyway. Let's mill it off. And there it is on the truck. What I did was I got Mike in the machine shop, who normally builds engines, uh, to go put the mag high tech on the bridge port and just mill off that flat back right down to where the radius in the casting begins. So it duplicates exactly the insides of the mag high tech. Put on the plastic cover. And while we were at it, I said, you know, it's kind of dark in there. How about we put some stage lighting, some theater lighting in there? So the guys did this LED setup. We've got LEDs down in the lube, LEDs ab above the lube, and a couple of them feature lights on the ring gear up there. With a mag high tech, uh, as with a lot of these, flatbacks, uh, the guys go for a higher static fill level. Uh, in the stock configuration uh, here on the RAM, it took 3.9 quarts. This is filled to the low level, uh, which is about 3 eighths of an inch higher than the stock RAM but it's six quarts, so there's literally over two quarts more in here. This level brings the, the oil into the axle tubes. There seems to be this whole school of thought that more lube filled to a higher static level is the killer app. Like, this is the thing to do. I don't think so. I'm, 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 my line of thought is that the guys who designed this axle know more about making it durable than anybody in the aftermarket. I'm not saying that the aftermarket can't do something better. That's what speed equipment is all about. But I'm beginning to believe that no one has. So we'll, we'll see here. We're going to run this thing at a few different speeds and see what does the lubricant do. So let's fire this thing up and see where we go. We're running 75W90 uh, synthetic, as in all our tests. Let's take it to five miles an hour. See what happens here. Now we've got the reluctor wheel for the Speedo and the ring gear picking up lube. And you can see it going with the ring gear, going with the reluctor wheel. We're getting a little action here because 
the differential assembly has some flats on it and the fluid level is so high that it's paddling the fluid. As I said, with the stock setup, when you start running the stock setup, the fluid level, the active fluid level drops down. What we're looking to do is lubricate the ring gear pinion, the ring gear pinion interface where you've got a high load sliding friction. And by extension, if, if this works right dynamically, you're taking the lubricant over the top and slinging it out to the front and rear pinion bearings. That's important. You don't want a design that starves those. So let's take it to 10 miles an hour and have a look at what's going on. All right, you'll notice that the dynamic running level has dropped. We're at just at 10 miles an hour. We're getting a lot of lube that's painting out here and falling off, uh, not involved in going over the hump, so to speak, and out to those pinion barriers. Let's take it to 15. Here's what I kind of feared. I don't know if you can see right in there, the lubricant is being driven back against this flat surface. There's no curving surface to take it nicely with the ring gear. So, I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that very well? You can see it driving against the surface there. That's doing work to the fluid. That's heating the fluid unnecessarily. And that's aerating the living hell out of the fluid. Aeration means less lubrication when you get into that ring to pinion interface. Also, you'll notice it's painting this thing all the way up to here, hitting the top, and we're only at 15 miles an hour. I'm glad I put those lights up there. It's falling off to the sides. Let's take it to 20 miles an hour. Wow, oh my God. Settle in at 20. Look at the work being done there. I hope you can pick that up with the camera, guys. Most of the lubricant that should be going to the pinion is going off to both sides. Got little eddy currents going on here, which are kind of odd. This is what I feared about these flat back designs. Let's take it to 30. We've got a perfect waterfall here off to the sides. Let's go to 50 miles an hour. 5-0. This sounds like a little scary to me. Uh, there you are, guys. I, I don't know how much is getting to the pinion, but there's an awful lot of action going on back here. Look at the work being done. And, and look at the aeration. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. All right. Let's bring it back down to idle. Just idle it. Give them a down sign. Yeah. Let's see how this settles out in terms of aeration. Stop the ring gear. You've just seen what happens with a higher than stock fill level, two additional quarts over stock, and a square back cover. I want you to notice that as it hits the cover, it's driven into the cover, it has to make a 90 degree change up the back here, hits another flat, and spills off to the sides, starving the pinion so and the pinion bearings that's work you're doing to the fluid that work heats the fluid for no good reason in this rear end there's frictional loss and viscous loss that's viscous loss in other words heating the fluid is no free lunch heating the fluid is degrades the fluid number one reduces its viscosity, number two, 
and cost you fuel economy number three. This is a fool's errand, all these flatbacks, in my opinion. They also advise putting two more quarts in this particular brand. Two more quarts would bring the fill level up, make the action and the work done to the fluid even more severe and aerate the fluid more excessively. Let's, real quick, aeration is air in the fluid. When it goes into that frictional interface where the bearings roll on the races, or more importantly, where the pinion rubs against the ring gear face, aeration degrades the film strength. So if you're heating it, that degrades the film strength. You're aerating it, that degrades the film strength. All of this work is done because they wanted a flat back and put a bunch of fins on it. I'll admit, being aluminum, you're going to get better hands heat transfer. Having fins on the outside, you're going to have better heat transfer. But doing all this work creates a hell of a lot of heat in the first place. I think it's time for us to now continue with part three. This is part 2.2, as you know. Uh, part three is on the dyno. Run it to 300 degrees, 250 horsepower to the road surface, and see how quick it gets there. See how well each design cools the lubricant. Uh, does it cool better than stock? There's a lot to learn. Stay tuned. If you'd like to follow on with this series or see all the other videos we've shot, and there's quite a few, just subscribe right here.